So, uh, Pantera is reuniting. Yippee. I'm sure you've all heard the news by now, but just in case you haven't, allow me to very briefly explain. On July 13th, 2022, late in the evening Eastern Standard Time, Billboard.com confirmed that Pantera, 90s groove metal pioneers and icons, we're going to reunite and go on a massive tour in 2023. Writing here, nearly 20 years after breaking up, Pantera's surviving members are hitting the road for a long hyped reunion tour in 2023 and have signed with Artist Group International to book their North American tour dates. Agent Peter Papalardo, who will be working with Pantera, in the next year went on to say we are thrilled to be working with such an iconic band and bringing their music back to the fans the following day on july 14th billboard would also release the following information guitarist zach wilde of black label society and ozzy osbourne fame and anthrax drummer charlie bennett will join phil anselmo and rex brown this summer to tour as pantera headlining a number of major festivals across North America and Europe and staging some of their own headline concerts, a source close to the group tells Billboard. The lineup has been given a green light by the estates of the band's founders, Vincent Vinnie Paul Abbott and Dimebag Daryl Abbott, as well as Brown, who last year said Wild wouldn't tour with a reunited Pantera. If that were to happen, it's unclear what changed his mind. It should be noted that nobody respecting Pantera or the estates of Dimebag Daryl and Vinnie Paul respectively have publicly spoken on the matter, nor have Phil Anselmo, Rex Brown, Zach Wilde, or Charlie Bennett. But considering the rate at which this news is spreading, I feel like it's only a matter of time before a, a public statement from any of the parties involved is made. Hell, I wouldn't be shocked if one was being released right now as I'm recording and editing this video. Before we go any further, allow me to make something very clear. Contrary to what you might be thinking to yourself right now, I, I really like Pantera's music. I respect everything they've done for metal. They are without question one of the most influential bands of the past 30 fucking years. Whatever opinions I have about the existence of this reunion tour are in no way related to the opinions I have of Pantera's music, specifically the quality of it. Put very simply, contrary to what some of you are probably thinking right now, I don't hate Pantera. I hate the idea of this tour, and I hate that it's happening in the exact fashion in which it's happening. And there are a few reasons for this. I'll, I'll go through them one by one. The first of which is that, you know, I don't really care what the estates of Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Daryl say. I know for a fact, based on comments that Vinnie and Dimebag made before they died, that they would not want Pantera to reunite. And even if they did, they wouldn't want Phil Anselmo to be a part of it. The relationship that Phil had with the Abbott brothers is one that I would at best describe as semi-functional. I mean, they made records, and they toured, and they got shit done, but they weren't exactly friends. I mean, sure, maybe they were friends in the very beginning, like when Phil joined Pantera in the late 80s, but it's clear to me, based on the information I have, that as time went on, the two parties grew more and more divided for a multitude of issues. For one, the Abbott brothers were frustrated and embarrassed by Phil's substance abuse issues, namely his heroin addiction and his alcohol addiction. The Abbott brothers were also frustrated and embarrassed uh, because Phil was constantly getting himself into trouble. In general, the Abbott brothers found that Phil was acting stranger and stranger and distanced himself further and further from Pantera as their popularity and fame grew. It got so bad at a certain point that during the production process of The Great Southern Trend Kill, 
Phil was recording his vocals and writing his lyrics separately in New Orleans, while the rest of Pantera was working in Dallas. Phil was also distracted easily by a slew of different side projects in the late 90s. Necrophagia, Super Joint Ritual, Down. Basically, Vinny and Dimebag were tired of waiting for Phil to get his shit together. And as a result, they decided to disband Pantera in 2003 and focus on a new project, Damage Plan. I'm tempted to say that whatever was left of a relationship properly ended there, but in reality, it got significantly worse, significantly quick. In a lengthy interview, in a lengthy interview with Metal Hammer magazine released on December 4th, 2003, Phil Anselmo said of Dimebag Daryl, he would attack me, and just knowing that he was so much smaller than me, I could kill him like a fucking piece of vapor, you know? He would turn into vapor, his chin would at least, if I fucking smacked it. And he knows that. The world should know that. So physically, of course, he deserves to be beaten severely. Only four days after these comments were made, 25-year-old Nathan Gale murdered Dimebag Daryl during a Damage Plan concert in Columbus, Ohio. Gale also killed Nathan Bray, 23 years old, club employee Aaron Hawk, 29 years old, Pantera security official Jeff Mayhem Thompson, 40 years old, and injured longtime Pantera and Damage Plan drum technician John Cat Brooks and Damage Plan tour manager Chris Paluska before being shot dead by Columbus police officer James, I'm not going to pronounce his last name. Holy fucking shit. I'm not going to get in trouble for pronouncing this man's last name. There's literally a slur in this man's last name. Jesus Christ. To this day, authorities have yet to pinpoint an exact motive for Nathan Gale's action, but Vinnie Paul, who witnessed all of this from behind his drum kit, blamed Phil Anselmo because of his words made in that Metal Hammer interview. When Anselmo called in the aftermath of the murders, Rena Haney, Daryl's girlfriend, told him she would blow Anselmo's head off if he attended Daryl's funeral. A slew of interviews conducted in 2009 and 2010 seemed to imply that at some point, Rita and Phil reconciled and, and forgived each other and all that stuff. The same, however, cannot be said for... Uh, Vinny and Phil. In fact, up until Vinny Paul's death, it's pretty clear that Vinny hated Phil Anselmo's guts. For these reasons alone, it's clear to me that even if Vinny wanted Pantera to reunite, he would not want Phil Anselmo to be a part of it in any fucking capacity. But this is assuming he would have wanted Pantera to reunite, which I also firmly believe that he didn't want, based on things that he has fucking said multiple fucking times. When asked about a Pantera reunion by Russian music website Darkside in 2011, Vinny said, it's ridiculous. Dime was such a huge part of it. It would be just completely asinine to even consider that. I think it's pretty disrespectful from people to even suggest it. He left an amazing legacy and it's gonna be left untouched. It's beautiful, it's pristine, and I wanna leave it that way. The history of Pantera speaks for itself. When asked again about a Pantera reunion by EMP Rock Invasion, Vinny said, People are selfish, man. They want what they want. They don't care what you want. And it's unfortunate that people go, Oh, wow, man, they can get Zach Wilde to jump up there on stage and it's Pantera again. No, it's not, you know. It's not that simple. If Eddie Van Halen was to get shot in the head four times next week, would everyone be going, Hey, man, Zach, go play for Van Halen. Just call it Van Halen. You see what I'm saying? I mean, it's really selfish to people for people to think that, and it's stupid. It's not right at all. Those are his words directly. Vinnie Paul, a founding member of Pantera, one of the only consistent members of the band alongside his brother, Dimebag Daryl, saying basically, no dime, no Pantera. End of story. Unfortunately, Vinny would pass away in June of 2018, but even so, his words remain pretty crystal clear. Without Dime, there's no Pantera. And not only is there no Dime, there's no Vinny either. And I know what people are going to say because they've already been saying it. Robert, tons of bands continue to tour and make music without their original lineups. I'm not arguing there aren't. Nearly every major rock, metal, punk band on this fucking planet exists right now without their original lineup intact. 
In fact, I challenge you to name like five fucking bands that still have their original lineups intact after like 20, 30 fucking years. But most of these bands will at least have constant members, people who always stick around and as such people who define the band and are irreplaceable. In the case of Megadeth, it's Dave Mustaine. In the case of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, it's Anthony Kiedis and Flea. In the case of Pantera, it was the Abbott Brothers. Plain and fucking simple. And both of them are fucking gone. And as such, I think it's genuinely disrespectful to continue Pantera without the Abbott Brothers involved in some capacity. Another reason why I think this is a really bad idea has to do with Phil Anselmo himself. I, I think he's doing this primarily to clean up his image and to make some money. Like, Phil Anselmo's reputation has never been great. He's violent, he's been accused of racism and homophobia on multiple fucking occasions. But these past few years in particular have been rough for him. He hasn't really recovered from the white wine incident in 2016. I mean, he still does pretty okay for himself, but he's definitely not as prolific now as he was like 10, 15, 20 years ago. There's not as much buzz around the projects he's involved with. The tours that he goes on are not as big as they used to, and he doesn't sell as many records as he used to. And right now, there are tons of older rock and metal bands that are hitting the road for the first time in like a fucking decade. Motley Crue and Rage Against the Machine, for example. And they're making lots of money, and for better or worse, there's a lot of buzz and a lot of hype and a lot of talk around what is happening at these shows on this reunion tour. And I think Phil is paying very close attention to that. I think he's looking at that and going, here's an opportunity to clean up my reputation and make a shitload of money in one fucking go. He's not at all concerned about the fact that the Abbott brothers are not involved in this in any capacity, in any real or legitimate capacity. He's not at all concerned about the comments that the Abbott brothers made about Pantera continuing without them, with Phil. He, he just looks at what will very likely be a massive fucking paycheck, and that's good enough for him. And that's fucking gross, dude. I, I pegged Phil Anselmo for a lot of things over the years. A sellout is not fucking one of them. And that is not a word I use lightly. But I want to be very clear here. Phil Anselmo is selling the fuck out by doing this fucking tour. Some people are still suggesting that this is a good thing because it'll introduce Pantera to a, a generation of new music listeners and... Respectfully, I don't think that's going to happen. Like, unless Pantera has a new album on the way and plans to get really active on social media really fucking quickly, I can't imagine that an audience for a Pantera reunion show would look like anything other than a bunch of 40 to 50 year old American white dudes. It's such a transparent and obvious case of, of nostalgic pandering that I'm honestly shocked that more people aren't noticing it. I'm also hearing people say that this is necessary because it's going to be a tribute to Dimebag and Vinny and therefore isn't actually that bad. It's not disrespectful, it's not disingenuous, it's not this, it's not that. But with all due respect, if Phil wanted to pay tribute to, to Vinny and Dimebag, he could have just done so. He has continued to play Pantera's music live with a slew of different side projects. In fact, on Slayer's final tour, his solo band, The Illegals, opened for Slayer, and guess what? They did a Pantera set, playing only Pantera songs. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, single-handedly proves that Phil is more than capable of paying tribute to Dimebag and Vinny while playing the music he helped to create without intentionally disregarding the final concerns and wishes of Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Daryl. We also need to consider the very real possibility that this just might not be good in general. Like, okay, you'll get to see Pantera, but will it be a good show? Like, there are plenty of people that can claim they've seen Motley Crue, but they can't claim they saw a good show. I saw Motley Crue back in like 2013, 2014 on their final tour. And they were in bad shape then. They're even fucking worse now. And they've been working on their reunion tour for three fucking years. Vince Neil had forever to get in fucking shape. And he still looks and sounds like a dying boar. Granted, Phil is not in as bad of a shape as Vince Neil, but he's not in amazing shape either. You know, his voice has visibly diminished in power and quality over the years. 
Is he going to be able to do this? Is he going to be able to perform at the level that this would demand, that this would require? Maybe he can. Maybe he'll put on an amazing show. But maybe he can't. Maybe this will be a sad, embarrassing display that only further soils the legacy of Pantera and the impact and influence of their music. I think a much smarter idea would be for Phil, Rex, Zack, and Charlie to instead tour under a new name, maybe Mouth for War or Cowboys from Hell, something like that. In this exact scenario, Phil is able to clean up his image, rebuild his reputation, make a shitload of fucking money, continue to play the music that he helped to create while paying tribute to Dimebag in Vinny in a legitimate capacity. And on top of that, the final wishes and concerns of Vinnie Paul and Dimebag Daryl, not their fucking estates, can actually be respected, acknowledged, instead of being trampled over. There is precedent for this. Finn Lizzy, for instance, toured for years without Phil Lynott, but when they finally decided they wanted to make new music, they decided that out of respect for Phil Lynott, for his friends, for his family, that they should now begin to operate under the name Black Star Riders. And they have ever since. Another great example, Heaven and Hell from the late 2000s. Ronnie James Dio, Tony Iommi, Geezer Butler, they reunited, wanted to make music and tour together, but they didn't want to trample on Black Sabbath, which was technically still active at the time. They didn't want to confuse people, so they decided they would now operate under the name Heaven and Hell. Even way back in the 80s, when Ian Curtis from Joy Division committed suicide, the remaining members of Joy Division felt... They were uncomfortable continuing under that name, and that out of respect for Ian and his friends and his family, they would now continue under the name New Order. Like, this can work for Pantera. If it worked for all these other bands, why not Pantera? Are you seriously telling me that the same 40 to 50 year old dads who want to go see Pantera wouldn't also go see basically the same fucking band, but now known as Cowboys from Hell, Mouth for War, whatever the fuck else? Maybe Cemetery Gates? I don't know. They could call themselves Sticky McDicky and the Fuck Bunch. It doesn't matter. So long as Phil is there and Rex is there and Zack and Charlie are there, so long as people know who they are and what music they're playing and why they're playing it, I think people will still show up. So yeah, in conclusion, um... <laughs> fuck the Pantera reunion, I guess. I I'm, I'm not a fan of this whatsoever. I mean, if you are... Good. Good for you, man. If you are just crazy super pumped for this, I'm so happy for you. I hope you go. I hope you enjoy it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope they put on a great fucking show and it's legitimately a great tribute to the Abbott brothers. But I don't think I am wrong. I don't think it will be. And I think this for all of the reasons we've mentioned in this video. I don't think it's what Dime would have wanted. It's definitely not what Vinny would have wanted. It's disingenuous. It's a very blatant cash grab. And it's just not necessary. There are a lot of ways to keep Pantera's music alive and introduce it to younger music fans. This is not it. It isn't. Not in my opinion, at least. So yeah, um, there you have it. It's kind of fascinating that we're doing this video, like what, two weeks after I did the When a Band Should Retire video. Um, hella great timing in that regard. Go ahead and check out reviewing every Pantera album if you haven't already. It'll be one of these two things here. Press subscribe so you can get updates on the Metal Meltdown. And as always, you have yourself a fantastic fucking day.